And now we're going to do a fights review. This is another classic fights review. This is the Julio Cesar Chavez Manuel Taylor fight. So Julio Cesar Chavez and Manuel Taylor squared off in 1990 for the WBC and IBF Junior World Tournament Championship. So Manuel Taylor obviously won the gold Olympic medal in the 1984 Olympic, obviously Olympic, Summer Olympics, and obviously went through to the professional ranks and picking up the IBF. Um, junior middleweight title, so a junior welterweight title from Buddy McGirt. At the same time, Julio Cesar Chavez had already collected four different belts in four different weight categories, and it was seen as many people, obviously many people in the sport of boxing, that he was the pound for pound best fighter in the world at that current time. So Miller Taylor being a rising up and coming, one of the like, faces of boxing, like, up and coming like, superstars in the sport at the time, squared off against Julio Cesar Chavez, like I said, for the WBC and IBF Junior World Tour titles. Obviously, I was not around when this fight was happened, and it's only recently that I watched this fight, but I do know a lot about this fight, and I've read a lot of interviews and um, fight reviews about this, and I also watched the HBO Legendary Nights documentary on Meldrick Taylor Chavez. A brutal fight, and I had to watch it, obviously watch the fight after watching the HBO Legendary Nights review. One of the brut most brutal fights I've seen in recent memory, just simply because even though Major Taylor did dominate Chavez for maybe 10, 11 rounds, obviously little small, small things go obviously a long way in big fights, especially what Chavez was, was doing to Major Taylor. So throughout the whole fight, or the majority of the fight, especially the early rounds, Major Taylor was just dominating Chavez. He was just pounding with everything. The movement, the punches, the combinations, literally everything was going all Major Taylor's way. And for every like three or four shots that Major Taylor was landing, Chavez would obviously land just one punch. But like the re uh, referee said Richard Still, the shots that Chavez was landing on Major Taylor was having an effect. And obviously at the beginning of the fight, gradually going to mid the rounds, you didn't really notice that, but gradually, as you see him through the corners, Mendes Taylor's face became more and more bruised, more damaged, and he had blood coming out of his mouth and his nose, taking a real beating from Chavez, even though on the surface, Chavez was clear, clearly losing the fight, and even though his fans knew it, and obviously like his corner knew it as well, obviously there's a big difference from winning the fight. Obviously, sorry, there's a big difference, obviously, winning the fight, and winning the fight without you knowing it, in, in my view. So eventually, Chavez took control of the fight late into the rounds, like the championship rounds, which was like 10, 11, 12 rounds. But before that, like I said, he was getting taken a beat and then easily would have lost the fight, in my opinion. So eventually, I worn out Meldrick Taylor, um, went to the 12th round, and even though this is one of the most stupidest things I've probably seen for like corner men instructions, Major Taylor was would win this fight easily. Twelfth round, battered and bruised, taking a, a big beating from Chavez, managed to get to the twelfth round. And this corner men said that he was, all this, the whole fight was he's on this round. Don't know what they were doing, thinking about. Don't, don't know what they was thinking about, telling them that if obviously your fighters deserve to be to win the fight and is dominated, obviously his opponent. Why are they telling him if he's obviously in the beating at the same time? Why are they telling him to go out and fight this round? But you know Chavez is a dangerous fighter, could obviously damn hurt you at any time. But obviously Major Taylor wasn't gonna just back down. Obviously was he? he was, obviously if he was dominating this guy for eleven rounds, why would anything be different? Um, obviously he got through the the final round. He struggled a bit. He felt he slipped by his own obviously uh, obviously admission. Too tired. Barely got out of the round and eventually, in the last 20 seconds, I think, got wobbled by a big right hand from Chavez, stumbled into the corner, managed to survive. Last 10 seconds gets dropped and he gets up at about 5 or 6. And Mitchell Sell asks him clearly twice, Are you okay to continue? And he stops the fight with 2 minutes 58, which obviously is 2 minutes 2 seconds left in the whole fight. It's a big controversy, obviously, around this fight as well. Obviously, one because which is still. Should have let him continue, in my opinion. Yeah, he was obviously he took a massive beating, but he deserved to win the fight. He dominated Chavez from the tenth, so the first round to about the tenth round, maybe the exception of the eleventh. I mean, he should have got his victory that he deserved because, much said, deserved his victory because he 
was a clear winner. But at the same time, he made the right call because who knows what might have happened if he carried on the last two seconds. Chavez might have come in with an even more bigger punch and might have done some serious damage to Mildred Taylor. So who knows, obviously, what might have happened. The corner men, I think, were, a bit, were seriously stupid and saying, oh, you, you, um, this fight is all in the balance or hangs in the balance. or That's not obviously what they said, but obviously, if you go back and watch the fight, you can clearly um, hear what they say. Really bad judgment from their corner men. Like... I don't know literally, I don't know how you can go forward a fight and tell your fighter that I oh, was all in this round, go out and fight and go out and fight him. Well, oh, look at him, he's he's battered and he's a bit sick of beating, but he's winning the fight. Just stay away and just box, don't fight dangerously. But obviously it's happened now. And obviously I think uh, the head trainer Lou Duva jumped on the on the uh, ring as well to like tell that to that tend to get up off his neck because obviously like he's main trainer and cares about him. So eventually, so obviously um, the end result was. Major Taylor lost his IBF junior m m uh, welterweight title. Chavez was now a double uh, title holder in the junior welterweight division. Obviously, holding his claim to be the best f um, fighter in the world at the current time. I think he gradually went on to eight or seven and zero before he lost. That's a massive. That's a massive um, achievement. So I don't think anybody has ever done that, and nobody will ever will. I mean, Chavez obviously like he's a really underrated box in my opinion. I've seen him fight quite a few times, and like he was a classic Mexican boxer. Take what five? No, sorry, not five. Take three to land one. The real like classic boxer. I was take take all the punishment to dish it out. Never say die attitude. Tough, and obviously really lost. I mean, he had like over a hundred fights, and. He only lost six times, I think. Obviously, when he was a bit older, lost Oscar the higher twice in the late night nineties. But then again, he was obviously far past his um, best by then. So these fights, in my opinion, don't really count because he had left for a title belt. But De La Hoya was obviously young, up and coming, and obviously Chavez was on his way down, really old, obviously by this time. So how can you expect obviously him to win every single fight when he's been in through so many fights? So eventually, in a sad, this is obviously the sad part of the review. Murder Taylor suffered, obviously, um, a many, many different injuries after this fight. Uh, urine and pure blood, fractures into obviously in his face. Yeah, like obviously like swollen, but as he, he took a massive beating in this fight. And sadly enough, he did carry on fighting. He won a welterweight title, but he did get knocked out by Chavez in a rematch a few years later. In, obviously, after the first fight, never really the same after this fight. So he was never the same after this fight, and never really showed anything that he could have done before this. Obviously, and that obviously a uh, 99 battle. That was his prime from the early days to that 1990 fight with Chavez. That was his prime years. And anything after that, I'm just surprised that they let him fight on. Obviously, if you can tell what had happened to him in that fight, and he took a massive beating, and he suffered badly from it, and I'm just surprised how he was allowed to carry on. But then again, sometimes different doctors, past fighters, um, they might think they're fit um, to continue. Other, fight, other doctors won't. So it was a great fight. That like said, uh, the overall opinion on the fight is great because two different clash of styles. Mel Taylor, the speed boxer, the f obviously classic boxer, like the quickness, the speed, the head movement, he had everything like a Sugar Ray Leonard sort of per type of fighter, but not the complete fight, obviously, as we know Sugar Ray Leonard is or was. And obviously, then you have Chavez Jr., like I said, no, sorry, Chavez, <laughs> the classic um, Mexican fighter, the brawler, the tough guy. The one who takes all the punches to land his, his stuff. It's a great clash of styles. Mexico, Mexico versus America. And two, two obviously world titles on the line. And it was a great, and it paid off all the hype obviously surrounding the fight. Paid off because it was a great fight. Probably the best fight of the 99. So this has been my Major Taylor Chavez uh, review. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in my next video.